Hi folks, my name is Warbass, and we have another interesting one for you today. I swear this channel is not going to be all about uh, mods and soldering. I just have one other thing I want to fix before I tuck my soldering iron back into a closet somewhere, and that is an issue I have with this. Uh, this is IntelliGel's uh, USB Power 1U. Let's get that in focus right there. Uh, this is not a product review. It's a USB port that provides power. That's it. Five volts into a little USB port. I got this a long, long time ago uh, when I first started modular uh, to go in this case right here, which is a little IntelliGel pallet case, um, mainly so I could plug in a key step to it because what I built with that case initially was essentially a monosynth that um, needed CV and gate out to really do anything interesting. Um, I don't use it that way anymore. I've had this sitting around since then thinking someday I will have something to do, uh, use it for. And I don't really use this pallet case as a instrument. It's pretty much a holding case for things that I, I'm unsure if I'm going to sell or not yet. Um, and what I want is to be able to use this in my real cases, my two um, black hole cases that are over there, my A, a and B case. Uh, and that's really because of something that I had originally in those cases a long time ago, which was my first real like brain when I tried to expand my setup, which was the Hermod sequencer, which also had a little USB hub on there. And the cool thing about having a little USB port, even if you're not using a key step or something like that, is something that's actually in frame right now, and that's this. It's a little gooseneck keyboard light. Uh, right now it's plugged into a USB port that it's on the front of my power conditioner, just underneath this table right here. But you can get these on Amazon for like 10 bucks. There's dozens of them of different kinds, dimmable ones, color temperature ones. I like these because they're long and minimal. They don't take up a lot of visual space. Um, and there's a nice gooseneck to them so you can kind of reposition them and, and whatnot. So the thing I liked when I had the Hermod was that I could plug in a light like this on the front and have it kind of bend over the top of my case. And my case would have, have a light to make it easier to see and view. I don't have the Hermod anymore because I, I thought it was too much like a DAW, and I didn't really like that, and piano roll setup in modular to me just didn't click. Um, if you like it, great, not for me. Um, the problem is that the the uh, power connector for this little USB port expects you to have an IntelliGel case, or at least an IntelliGel um, power bus or whatever it's called, uh, power system, because it has this little two pin plug or ground and five volts. And why do I know that it's grounded five volts besides knowing that USB runs at five volts? Because they, they handily labeled the back. There we go, is that in focus? Cool. Ground and five volts. Well, if I can figure out how to get my other cases, which don't have this connector, to give this thing five volts, well, I should be able to set it in my one U row over there and have light which would be really nice. And one of the things that I was um, teaching myself more about and trying to figure out how doable this was, was whether or not I could get five volts easily off of my um, power bus over there. And that's when I <laughs> finally asked myself a little bit more of the question around uh, your rack power cables in general. But here we go. Here's one. Um, at one end we have a 16 pin connector. Ta -da. And at the other end we have a 10 pin connector. Um, Where'd the six pins go between the 10 and the 16? Um, I don't know if a lot of people know this, the majority of people know this, when I've been kind of like Googling to learn more about it, it seems like something that was um, maybe a lot more popular about a decade ago. It still seems some like a lot of modules uh, that are still kicking around that some people use um, actually leverage a 16 pin on both ends. But this 16 and 10 setup it is becoming like more of the default, which means there's a bunch of pins here that don't make it to here, but that are still actually um, kind of supported by the, the power bus. And, and what are on those pins? Well, I'll pull a graphic up uh, on the screen right now. Uh, a bunch of other cool stuff. We've got, um, we've got five volt power, a CV line and a gate line. Um, actually a pair of CV and a pair of gates and a pair of five volts. So that those three together combined to make six. Um, it seems like there are a handful of modules that communicate with a 16 
to 16 pin cable and leverage the two gate lines, the two CV lines to actually do some kind of like normalization within the power bus between the modules that you can configure with some jumpers on the back. I, I don't think I have any modules that do that. If I do and someone sees something and uh, I don't know, let me know, I could be very wrong. I think I maybe have one cable in my entire collection of cables I've ever had that's actually this this wide, the 16 and 16. Nearly everything is this 16 and 10. So my idea I had was, one, confirm that my power bus right now actually supports the five volts and is actually kicking out five and isn't just kicking out the pl uh, plus 12, minus 12 and ground. And it is, uh, according to the website for the manufacturer. So my idea was that if I just cut off all of these except for one of the five volts uh, and the ground, replace it with those, then I essentially have a uh, exact same set of ground and five volt power, but with a adapter and plug that has somewhere to plug into on my two cases. So that's what I'm going to do today. Okay, so I would not recommend you learn how to solder from my channel, uh, but I'm just going to show every step of the process of this just in case this all works out well. Uh, I'm just going to heat up what's here right now while providing just a little bit of tension on the other end of the cable. We'll start with the ground. Of course, this is not plugged in anywhere. That would be very silly of me. Come on. And there we go. All right. Well, it's like a little flat pad. That'll be fine. And we'll do the same with the other one. We're just going to heat it up, melt the solder, the smallest bit of tension. There we go. Step one, done. Now let's make a cable. All right, so triple checking on the pinout, there are um, a bunch of cables that we actually can use here that'll be fine. So we've got all 16 on this cable. This will be the end that we that we keep, that we'll plug into the bus. Uh, the bottom two cables here, it's not just the red one, but it's the bottom two that are minus 12. Uh, then the next six are ground. And from the top down, we have gate, gate, CV, CV, plus five, plus five. So I need to get rid of at least the bottom two, then keep one. And in the opposite direction, I need to get rid of the top four and then keep one. And that should end up with a, a single plus five on here and a single ground on here. So let's get to work. Um, if you've never messed with these cables before, uh, all you really need is a nice pair of scissors. Nice is subjective. Not the scissors you use to open packages of raw meat, ones that are just the, the ones that haven't been demoted to that purpose yet. Um, all right, so what we're gonna do here is just use like a fingernail and break off those two. We won't need those. We'll pull those all the way down. And we're gonna keep, keep one. So let's grab this. All right, that'll be a keep. And in the other direction, the first four we don't need, gate, gate, CV, CV. Let's see, did I do that right? One, two, three, four, yep. We'll get rid of those. And then we're gonna keep one. All right. So now we got this kind of frayed, frayed mess here. Uh, I'm gonna bring these all the way down as far as I can. And same with these. And we'll just use our scissors here to get rid of them. See if we can do this as close as possible to the actual adapter. Bye. Okay. And on the other end. All right. That's good enough for me. I'm losing focus. All right. All the way back. There we go. So we've got rid of the kind of dead weight from the bottom and the top of the cable. I might trim those a little closer. Uh, with scissors or wire cutters in a second, but I want to keep the cables on either side of this. So I'm going to pull these all the way down next. And the one thing I think that is uh, handy here is that I didn't pull 
which you could actually do on accident here, uh, pull accidentally the fourth cable from the end on both sides, uh, which would have then made it harder to tell uh, which one is five volts and which one is ground. I guess you still have the red stripe there to tell when I go to solder it onto the actual thing. So I've right, got those pulled down. Again, those are the wires that I want to keep. There we go. My lens is struggling to focus. I'm going to keep those and ditch all of these middle ones. Um, and then we should be kind of set with this step. Let's see. It's going to be closer. All right. Sorry for the focus issues as I'm seeing my monitor. Cool. There we go. We've got a five volt and we've got a ground. Well, back to soldering. Okay, off camera I have prepped my two wires by just stripping them and, and adding a little glob of solder on the end. The other thing I'm going to do really quickly here is just add some solder to these two pads. This might be overdoing it. Again, this is not a channel where you learn how to solder. I'm just doing this because I want my synth to be a certain way and I'm trying to get better about sharing that in case it helps other people figure out how they want their synth. Am I getting anything here? There we go. That one already has plenty. Let's add some for good measure. Wonderful. All right. Now I don't really have to hold onto more solder in real time. That's what I always found is my little hack. I can just hold onto the wire I need to solder and where I'm going to go. So, um, once again, the one that's closest to the red stripe. It's going to be ground, so we'll start there. We'll just heat up our pad, hold our wire, and hope for the best. Come on, come on, be friends. Wow, that's too much solder. Whoa. All right, good enough. Next, it's come off in the same direction. Come on. There we go. All right. Not going to win any prizes. Let's see if it works. I'd spare you the uh, five minutes it took me to plug that in. Uh, but here we're looking at my pallet case that's just empty, uh, dusty, just plugged into my power conditioner and, and nothing else so that I can safely test this because I'm not going to put it in one of my main cases until I've proven that it works. So let's turn it on. Of course, nothing happens. Um, <laughs> let's plug in a light here. Let's see if we can get this whole thing to be in frame. And we touch the end. Ooh. Hey, look at that. So now I've got... Um, you know, USB 5 volt power ground without having to deal with a little two pin connector and I can move it to whatever case I want. So let's do that. All right, here we are back in the A case uh, with the new USB power um, port right there. You can see my two crummy little wires left over from the 16 pin cable going into my uh, power bus back in the back. Um, let's power it up. And we can plug it in. And here's our light. You can see kind of like how nice this particular light is because with the size of this case, I can get it kind of dead center. There we go. And it lights it up pretty, pretty darn well. We'll move it up to the top. We can bring it way up out of the way. Um, just in case we want to test how bright it is for the whole room. If I kill the rest of the lights in this room, I'm recording this at night, so this is literally um, 
I guess my computer monitor's on a little bit ways over there. But without the light, we really have nothing. Maybe my camera kind of slowly adjusts to, to pick up that computer monitor and see if we kill that. Yeah, that's actually just the light from the case, um, which is always fun. But that's quite a bit more useful if you're ever in a dark setting. Perfect. All right, I'll probably do the same over there because I've got another one of these actually on the way right now. Uh, for those of you who have seen the A-Case uh, walkthrough video, yeah, there's a lot <laughs> um, different a very particular module that I've been kind of waiting for uh, someone to make has come out and it should have arrived today, but it hasn't yet. And so with that module, I'm actually able to really change how I route the audio and I don't need that X, Y over here, which is why this project kind of started in the first place. So I'm gonna do a whole bunch more. Um, once that module comes, it will get way, way, way deep back into uh, sound design, sampling, uh, and craziness with this case very, very shortly. Until then, uh, thank you very much. I'll put links in the description for, you know, this lamp and, or this little gooseneck light, uh, and any other stuff that I, I used in this video, but thanks for watching. Peace.